What'd you like from Xander tonight? Uh, you know, he's always composed, but I, I felt like he was kind of letting the ball go with some conviction. Uh, one, one trying to be too cute for brevity's sake. That's the best way I can say it. Um, <clears throat> you know, but also the way he was mixing speeds too. I mean, he showed he's a potential starter or a lot of other available roles because right now everything's kind of up in the air for us. Was Trey at shortstop a, a one-game science experiment or anything like I that? I mean, not necessarily a science experiment. Just, you know, kind of managing the lineup where we're trying to get different guys involved. And Logan Chambers is going to play for us, um, you know, all, all year long, sometimes in the outfield, sometimes in the infield. So it was one of the first opportunities to get him on the infield really is what it was all about. What what can Trey being at shortstop maybe do for some guys to, to get in the lineup out in the outfield or like Chambers or, or somebody like that? Yeah. Can it open up your lineup more? I, I think if you're trying to do matchups and really get a lot of left-handed hitters in or a lot of right-handed hitters in or if you make a, a late-game move, it can do a lot. But – to be fair, I mean, the guy can play the position just as well as he can third. Um, he can also play on the right side, too. But he's one of the better left side infielders in the entire country, I think. Don't use an abundance of lefty pitchers already. How much separation is there kind of behind Kirby and Redmond? Not, not a lot, I don't feel. I mean, if Fitz throws like that tonight, um, and certainly Xander in, in his two outings has, has shown that he belongs in the mix, too. So um, I don't think there's a lot of separation at all. I think there's a lot of avail availability as it relates to what we got going on in the bullpen, especially with these pitchers that are starters right now not having that high pitch count tolerance. How pleased are you with the offensive production from I mean, a lot of guys? It's not just a couple of guys producing early. Yeah, pleased. I mean, I think, um, you know, there, there's certainly no arrogance to it because we haven't, you know, we haven't gotten into league play and it's not like we've done anything to brag about. But I, I do think – we knew we had good options, if that's the best way to say it. So it's not really a surprise. It's just going to be a matter of who who fits in where. Maybe there are some matchups or what day it is. Uh, maybe we just feel like going with a particular guy. But right now, those guys all need to work hard and you know be ready for their opportunity because we can mix and match a lot of different guys. I feel. Ben Joyce hit over 100, 100 threes. What did you see from him? Um, he didn't hit 104, which is disappointing. <laughs> uh, and he has done that in practice before, but um, just getting more and more comfortable each time he's out there. He just has not accumulated a lot of innings. I don't know that he's thrown over 15 innings um, ever in a spring. Uh, I don't have documented everything he's done in summer ball. but um, So he, he just needs experience. And he's certainly gotten a lot of it in the fall and in spring training, which was the January and February period. But uh, there's no action like game day action. And um, you see it in some guys' eyes. I mean, a kid like Grant Cherry and and some others, they like being out there and competing, and you actually get a better version of them than you do in practice. And I think Ben's got a little bit of that too. He's just got to figure out how, how does he tame that that wild horse, that wild stallion he's got with that arm. And as he continually does it, it's going to be fun to watch. There's not going to be one day where it's just bam. He knows exactly where to spot it up against righties and lefties. Uh, but he does throw strikes. He's got tremendous stuff. It's going to be fun to be a part of his career and him figuring that, that stuff out. Everybody talks about his fastball, but how good's the, the changeup, and I think it looked like a slider. Yeah, the, the, the slider, he ran out in front of it a couple times. Uh, that, that's that been equally effective in scrimmages, but the changeup when it's on, is it's almost kind of unfair. I couldn't believe, apologies, I don't remember which Asheville lefty was up at the time, but he didn't look that bad on it. Uh, maybe, I don't know, because he would have been so late on the fastball. I don't know what the deal was, but that pitch was, was one of the best pitches thrown of any pitcher tonight. And once hitters start thinking about those two off-speed pitches, it's going to be very difficult to sell out for that fastball, which is admittedly what all of our guys do in scrimmages against them. How many guys have you had to throw a 90-mile-an-hour changeup? How many guys have you even seen, I guess, do that? You know, Crochet was always too worried that his was hard, but or too hard, but, I mean, he was close to 100 as well. So... Um, I don't know that it's more than those two guys that I can think off at the top of my head, but it's it's abnormal. Um, but he's an abnormal kid, abnormal work ethic, and uh, fortunately he's been blessed with abnormal stuff too. How would you uh, assess Christian Moore's performance? You know, it was great. I, I think, you know, it, just to be frank, I mean, at times he, he uh, lets the umpiring, you know, bother his performance a little bit. and. That first A.B. I don't think was so much about him needing to get his feet wet or his first career start. I could see him maybe being frustrated with the call early in the at-bat, which was a strike um, according to what I looked at back there. But the rest of the night he was dialed in. I think he sees the ball 
as well as any hitter we have on our team as far as what's balls and strikes, where to hit the baseball, what's going on, spin and all that things. So, you know, he's competitive and he's also gifted in that area. I, I didn't have that little deal, whether it's hand eye or whatever. And then it doesn't take a genius to look at him and realize he's got some power. So, and hopefully Danny White's done a great job with fundraising and everything else in our, in our athletic department. Hopefully he can pay for the umpire's uh, car windshield that, that Simo busted out. I, I thought the umpiring was fine tonight. So, no, if he's listening, no ill intent there. A few more? Any more? All right, thanks, Doug.